Welcome to the podcast that we think is happening. <laughs> Happy Tuesday for the podcast. Had some people complaining about volume levels in the last couple of podcasts. We're trying to work that out. Hopefully it's better for the podcast today. If not, let us know. Yeah, please do. Um, in a actually, nice, constructive right. way. Even I, though you guys did yesterday. I would actually tell you, <laughs> if you ever do have a problem with the podcast, just let us know. Yeah, you can always and, text us and even say hello, too. I mean, if you don't like the content, keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, but if there's a technical problem. That's what we mean. You can text us anytime you want to. 877-2-RADIO-U. Put your name and that's your podcast listener. Uh, you can also join us at Radio U Riot, like we remind you so often. Uh, if you join us on our Facebook page, you can always message us there. All right, here's what I got for you, Nikki. Uh, in the podcast today, we discuss your jug. My jug of water. It's there. I'm behind. How far, how far down? Are, you're behind. See, you're behind. No, no, I'm not. I'm ahead. I am uh, two hours ahead. All right. Okay. I'm two hours ahead. It's Look been a you. busy morning. I haven't had time to drink my water like <laughs> I need to. I got water anxiety. I do. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> uh, we talk about the Monday effect, selling things, what not to do with your Orbeez. It's not a euphemism. Well, the Orbeez thing then leads to what not to do with... A toilet in your general. Your toilet in general, and that's your guys' stuff. Uh, we talk Super Tuesday, McDonald's, and Wendy's breakfast. Dude, it was, we didn't even know it yesterday, but we were part of a war. <laughs> it was real. That breakfast war's been around. Yeah. <laughs> or at uh, least Wendy's and McDonald's, their war has been around. What's going on with NASA, lottery tickets, renewable batteries, the Division Two? That's most of it. So hopefully you enjoy the podcast. Uh, reminder, text us 877 radio U and enjoy. All right. I'm going to try to connect to the server now <laughs> for our new and improved whatever it is. To send it over so you guys get it. All right. Bye. Fingers crossed. A Rotten Tomatoes score so high, they refuse to make it public. The Riot on Radio U. Now, most of you can't see it. But Nikki has taken to carrying around a large <laughs> weight. Well, you know, you just carry it around. It's <laughs> it's I, very hard to bring in from the car. I'm not going to lie. She's kind of like Sisyphus. She's rolling that stone up the hill <laughs> every single day. Now it was the deal of the day, and I got one of those gallon water things. So it shows it's a jug. you. Yeah, it's a jug. So it's basically like what you're supposed to drink in an entire day. <laughs> but it's got like motivational like lines and times to it. So by like 9 a.m. I'm supposed to have this or by 3 p.m. I'm supposed to have this. Does it take into account how early we get up? It does not because I shouldn't have to drink anything for a while. Okay. But I start earlier, so it's okay. fine. So how's that going? Good. I, I finish it each day. Yeah? Not too hard. Really? Yeah. Why? Well, <laughs> The hardest like part is carrying it. The thing, I'm not so sure about that because I feel like there's a new psychological pressure that you're facing because at one point... Yesterday or last week, I heard, oh, I haven't had enough water yet. I don't think and that was from me. Did I say that or did you think I said that? When I made it up? I don't know. No, you said it. Okay. Under your breath. I did. Over there looking at the jug. And did I was I? just like, <laughs> the jug is the judge mm. that Nikki has brought into her life now. She's she's keeping score with a water jug now. And I'm just concerned that it's going to lead to, like, this is the thing that breaks you. Like, all the other things, no, you could do I've it. I've already been broken. <laughs> I've already been broken. This is now hydrating me by, back to life. So do you feel like, though, with all that extra water, because, it, I mean, it's a substantial amount of water. I thought I do would you... feel better. I, I did. I thought it would make, like, oh, this magical thing, because uh, yeah. I just assumed I wasn't drinking enough water. Uh, but well, as, that's what they say. Yeah, that's and they say that if you think you are, you're still not. Right. Um, but this gives you a a marker, like this is what I should be doing each day. I mean, I haven't read this specifically, but the general impression I get is that if you don't hate water yet, you're probably not drinking enough of it. Yeah, pretty much. Like you need to hate it. <laughs> I usually finish this by hate dinner drinking. time, uh, <laughs> so I'm usually done by then. Okay. And then, and then no then. more water till the next day. <laughs> and Eric has to fill it up. It's so hard to fill up. <laughs> It's so much, but it's good. So I'm glad I got it. It's got wheels. It it's should. Like, it should have its own little luggage. It's like, it's like a little suitcase. Well, well, I have my purse. I have my lunch bag. I have my work bag. <laughs> and I have this gallon thing. I can't carry it all in each day. I can't. He's like, 
How many trips you make from the car? That's only three. I'm only doing one, but it's very painful. <laughs> the truth is, I really am getting in better shape, but it's mostly because of all the stuff I have to carry around. <laughs> well, that's it. Well, it's my right side because I put it all on one arm and I try to bring it in. <laughs> so I have my left for the door and to put our keys in. It's a good call. So maybe, that's it. Maybe you should rotate that day to day so you don't get overdeveloped on well, one side. It's you know, like is this leg day or arm day? Yeah. It's like it's my left or right arm day. Oh man, my left arm's so tired. <laughs> I carried the water in this one today. Oh, but it was only like uh twelve or thirteen or fourteen dollars. Like it wasn't that much. All right. It's a nice big bottle. Nothing is gonna get Nikki to buy it like a bottle. Will. Nope. And if you come and attack me. Well, maybe I can swing it at you. No. I don't know. It's pretty heavy, though. I mean, if she does manage to swing it at you, it's a one-hit punch. I'm pretty much just guaranteed to drench you with it, but that's about it. Whatever. It also she, falls over in the car every morning, and I really hate that, listen, too. Yeah, I, I hate when you hear it sliding around. I'm always and afraid that, it's going to open up. You hear this. <laughs> in case you're wondering, yes, we do get complaints. They have gone too far. This time, they are going to be held accountable. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Now, today's Tuesday. Though I really, I swear to you, I spent the majority of the day yesterday thinking it was Tuesday. I don't... I don't know how you make that mistake. I mean, I've mistaken Wednesdays for Thursdays. Well, maybe the last Monday you were on vacation, so your body just was like, no, we don't do Monday. And so you were just thinking Tuesday. No idea. But I'm sitting here reading this article about the Monday effect. Are you familiar with the Monday effect? Is that where you get so anxious on Sunday night that it bugs you because then you go to work on Monday or you have like classes? No, that's a good one. Uh, but and that's real. We've experienced that. Uh, but no, the Monday effect is basically when you return to Monday, you hate Monday. It's you have you a mean, case of the, the, the that's case the, of the Mondays. It's not an effect. That's just Monday. It's the Monday effect, Nikki. Right here, I'm looking at an article from Lehigh University where Oliver Yao, a professor of decision and technology analytics. He's the lead author on this study, and here's what he found. Most people experience a, at least a 10%, 10% dip in productivity on Monday mm-hmm. versus the rest of the week. Because of the effect? They say that it's basically your, the psychological effect of having to go back to whatever it is that you do, whether it's school or work or whatever. You're probably a good 10% not as great. I would always think of it as like you're warming up back into the week. Yeah. And my thought is like 10% is an average. So, you know, there's people like me that are on one side of the average and people like Nikki on the other side. So when you, everybody meets in between. Yeah. Like I'm pulling the average down or up depending on how you want to talk about the statistic. But yeah. See, I basically now like on Sundays, I get up as early as I do on Monday. So I thought that that would actually negate the Monday effect for me. Uh, cause like, you feel like you were already. Cause yeah, cause it's like, bro, it. I'm starting. I, my week ends on Saturday. It starts on Sunday. It doesn't start on Monday. Um, but no, I still had the Monday effect yesterday. It was <laughs> doesn't real. change. And then let's, let's name the Tuesday thing. <laughs> the Tuesday is where you're just all off. Nikki, no way. We're calling it the Tuesday bounce back. No, it needs to have a T. <laughs> uh, the Tuesday tantrum. <laughs> the Tuesday uh, Terrible Tuesday throwdown. Tuesday. That, that could work. Tuesday thrown It doesn't. That seems like a valve buzz. Like, <laughs> it seems like a competition. It does. Like uh, Terrific Tuesday. There, you know what? I like that. Because, mm. guys, we're going to change it. Today's the day we're changing it all. There's no effect today. Today's wonderful. Everything is, in fact, compared to yesterday, Wow. <laughs> Everything you pushed from yesterday that you didn't want to do is now today. Probably 10% stronger today. Yeah, I think so. And then be... you're going to be like super amazing tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's. And then it slides back down on Thursday, down into Friday. It's fine. When but then you know you're what? in your weekend. Right now, you're about to peak. Like we're getting close. So, <laughs> welcome to Tuesday. <laughs> the Monday <laughs> effect is in the rear view, <laughs> but it's always there. Are people really still listening to the riot? You don't have work to do or laundry to fold or literally anything else to do? The riot. Radio U. Yesterday, yesterday, no. See, I don't even, I can't keep days straight. I don't know what's happening. Over the weekend, I sold something 
on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. And remember, that's been, Nikki and I have done eBay, Craigslist. We're on Facebook Marketplace now. Pretty soon we're going to be on something else. She's doing auctions now. Well, even Facebook Marketplace, though, it had a sweet spot there in the beginning. It did. It is not and what it was. And then in came the the fraud and the... The people. The people, the... The riffraff. The not, like, what is... It's scams or just, like, yeah. you know, the same thing you would get on Craigslist when you're trying to sell something. There was a window. And you're like, was not like how that. is that possible? They managed. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I put something on there like six months ago. Yeah. I No one wanted it. Completely forgot about it. I got a message Sunday night. They're like, hey, is this still available? And I was just like, well, this is obviously a scam. <laughs> like, this is a lie. Yeah, previous conversation. <laughs> this is a lie. Like, this is somebody's been hacked. And so they're just going through Marketplace randomly saying this. And I was like, yes. They're like, uh, I'll give you. I was I was selling it for twenty five. They offered me twenty, which hey, that's actually not bad if it's been up for six months. Especially considering the fact that I didn't even. It was like we do I still have it, and it? they can see how long it's been up. Yeah. So usually you'd really get a low low offer at that point. They were like, "I'll give you twenty dollars and pick up in fifteen minutes," and I was like, "Well, there's a death squad coming." <laughs> but okay, well, I'll, I'll gonna, sell it to you. They're trying. <laughs> they found me, and they're using this as a way to get in my house. They came and picked it up. That was it. They paid 20, the $20? They gave me $20 cash and carried it off. And, you know, a smart person would be like, oh, well, this is a great opportunity to save this additional $20 that I now have that I did not have earlier. And now I'm like, how do I spend this? <laughs> what should I do? Where well, you're in should investing I spend it? it back in. What, what should I waste it on? Like, what do I have? So I have $20, and now I'm looking for a place to spend it. Just <laughs> searching the internet, looking Big. for anything that I can just drop this money on for no good reason. Big spender. Oh, yeah. Come <laughs> All on. All $20. Come on. It's nice because, you know, you, you forget about it, and at least now it's it's out of the list <laughs> of the things you have it's to just, sell. It's just weird. And so I walked downstairs, and I was like, what? It's weird. You and know they what? picked I, it up. I feel like it's just a lesson for all of us that, you know, you think things aren't happening. You think you're stuck. But man, out there. There's one person. There's some magic taking place. You don't know it. <laughs> you just things, ha- are, things are coming together. <laughs> you have to find the right person. That's and right. Sometimes just, it's ready. And sometimes it's six months later. They just weren't ready to mm-hmm. make that love connection with that stupid thing I had on the internet. And sometimes it's when you don't expect it to happen and you've forgotten all about it. And Someone then, comes whoop. along and there you go. Yeah. Come on. There it is. You think it's a scam? Turns out it's real. Did you did you remember to take it off Facebook Marketplace? Oh yeah, I immediately okay, marked it as sold. <laughs> Finally. So let's. Now I have nothing on there. So you guys will have to find me for a different reason. Wow! Not only are you already awake, but you're listening to the riot. Your day is off to a pretty rough start. The riot on Radio U. Let's talk about it. Signs. Signs. Signs everywhere. There's signs. Pointing at the center and break. Okay. So if we see a sign, it means that somebody has done something and they didn't think anybody was going to do it, but they've done it. And so no, now they had to put a sign up. More than somebody. Somebody's, Usually it's you're twice right. you're at right. least to make, because at first they're like, oh, maybe that's a fluke. It was just one person. Yeah, they're not going to do it again. Let's not it spoil the whole apple bunch, but instead uh, someone else rolls in and does it too. Mm-hmm. Cyril Schreiner, he's from France, he's a YouTuber, and uh, he decided that as part of some YouTube whatever. Like a prank um, video or? Well, something, I don't know that it's really a prank video, but he filled his uh, bathtub and his toilet with Orbeez. Oh, I know. Why do, I don't understand. And those get so many views. No, that's a thing. No, I those little, uh, yeah. yeah, the little beads. Yeah, I've played with Orbeez. They're fun. It's like water, the little water be- beads. Yeah. Um, here's, here's the problem. You know, does anybody see it coming? Um, when he started draining and flushing, uh-huh. he literally stopped up the sewer <laughs> for his entire neighborhood. <laughs> His Orbeez, because they uh, absorb they absorb water, yeah, and so they got all the way down there and sucked up all the sewer water, which you need to move things along. That's a shame. So what do you have to do, or well, how they find out it was you? Uh, they filled <laughs> well because he, they filled the pipes and flooded the toilet and sink. Like it wasn't just a matter of you know they could they could figure it out, sure, because uh, he had to get. 
Did you see him trending like, hey, I filled my pool with Orbeez. I just always assume that after that, you have to scoop them out or something. Uh, <laughs> Same thing with your bathtub. Well, that's what a lot of people online are just like, yeah, when you do that stunt, you have to take them out. You have to take them out. But he was like, nah, just drain them. <laughs> just put it down. So instead of it draining down like the tub, he probably shoved some in the toilet, too. And just try to flush <laughs> them away. <laughs> Good oh, for him. Man, you can't even use paper towels in there. Okay. Like, <laughs> Let alone all these. But, but the Orbeez. <laughs> uh, when you, I mean, I should go watch the video because that's a moment. I hope like, they cover that it. Is, that's such a moment <laughs> when he begins to realize, like, uh, they're not going, they're not going down. And it's not a private thing anymore. Like this isn't just a like your community, your neighborhood now knows what you're doing. Uh-oh. If they didn't know already, you had this YouTube channel and you're doing the Orbeez things. Here's what I love. This is just some Twitter responses. Somebody is like, "You should blame Orbeez and sue for damages because they didn't specify not to do this." Yeah, you shouldn't have to. <laughs> shouldn't have to tell you everything not I to do that. with them. Like. But you know, you know that on the Orbeez boxes now, mm. or on the packages, it's going to say, do not flush Orbeez. Not responsible not for it. Do not put Orbeez in the drainage system. So great, dude. So great. Uh, I mean, the closest I got to this was that time that I tried to vacuum up all the popcorn, and I ruined the vacuum cleaner. How come? Well, because what I should have done is just scooped oh, it up and put it, it in up. the trash. But I was like, I ain't doing that. I'm using the vacuum. Did you and vacuum I was with like, the kernels? Hey, mom, how excited are you about a new vacuum right now? <laughs> At least it wasn't Orbeez. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole neighborhood didn't know, but I'll just tell you. <laughs> she, she was still mad? Not everyone was super excited <laughs> about what happened with the popcorn and the vacuum. Well, that's an insight right there. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Some things you just learn by doing. Oh. And others by signs or by the boxes when it tells you not to. Learn from my mistakes. The riot. Just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not good. Wait, isn't that exactly what it means? It's the riot on Radio U. So I'm looking here, man. I feel like I, I I understand that it's a thing, but the coronavirus coverage is just raging out of control. Like there's so much of it. But in the middle of all of it, I did find this one thing that struck a chord for me, and that was uh, the CDC talks about, and everyone's talking about now, washing your hands. It's really in vogue now. You know, take some time, wash your hands. It's exciting. So they say you're supposed to wash your hands, and then what about hand sanitizer? Because that's a lot of the bigger areas. It's been bulk purchased right (laughs) so it's hard to find depending on where you're at i don't know the answer to that Mm. uh the other thing though i remember when i was little um there was this lady she's she probably still is a nurse and she told me that the way to not get sick is to not touch my face is that the biggest thing and i was just like what and she said that touching your face is one of the single like biggest ways that people get sick because what happens is what does your head have multiple holes in it Mm. your ears your nose your mouth and so you touch surfaces and then touch your face and that's how often things don't touch your face i just did it (laughs) don't do it i just just did it it. i just did it (laughs) oh my gosh but then when you touch your face that is when things really transfer to that's right there yeah because even when you're washing your hands you're touching stuff you touch your face not touching your face Mm. is one more line of defense against not picking up germs and microbes and the viruses and stuff. I was watching someone yesterday, uh, she's in Japan, and she was saying how, you know, face masks, it's super hard to buy those now because everybody's bought them, so they're yeah. having a shortage of them. Uh-huh. And it's not just for you yourself, uh, you know, to not get someone else's germs, but face masks are really important if you have, if you're sick, from keeping those germs, you know, from spreading, yeah. from spreading and getting out. But if you're healthy, uh, they say just even washing your hands is more important than any other thing you can do. So washing your hands. And then if you want to go level two customer service, mm-hmm. don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. They now say that you said average, it. What I know. You're just like, I just want to do, is, all I do is rub my face you're with my hands. You're not supposed to touch your face. On average, people touch their faces 16 to 23 times per hour. So, oh my gosh. Can you go a whole hour without touching your face? My hands are already shaking. 
we just shouldn't have mentioned it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's so hard now. I don't understand. Now it's all I want to do. The riot is well versed on many different topics. They're shy at first, but they're quite skilled at conversation. This is the riot on Radio U. You know, it was just a passing thought. It did, I should have gotten it up front and been ready for it. But I said, uh, we've there's the YouTuber that filled his bathtub and his toilet with Orbeez. He's in and France. Then, and then rather than getting them out, his way of getting them out was to open the drains and flush the toilet, which kind of makes sense until you think about how absor- <laughs> Orbeez absorb water. And it's all water down there. <laughs> so it uh, ruined the the, ta- the neighborhood's yeah. and, uh, sewer system. And his apartment. And his apartment. Ruined. So then it occurred to me, like, what have you flushed that you shouldn't? Pete says, when we were younger, my sister tried to see just how much toilet paper she could fit in the toilet and flushed it. The toilet overflowed in the bathroom that was directly above our kitchen, and all the water came through the ceiling in the kitchen. Aww. My dad was not happy. Oh, I bet. Wow. That's... See, that was when you were younger, though, this Orby guy. Dude, I will tell you this one time. I still, to this day, don't know what happened, but my uncle lived in Virginia. We drove there, and there was a thing. It was an eight-hour, six-hour trip, and it took like 12 hours. I don't know why. And I woke up at like six o'clock in the morning and I just heard this water flowing and like from the ceiling in this other room. And I didn't know what was going on. And apparently something had happened to a toilet upstairs. Oh, and it was going through the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, no. It was like a, it was like a nightmare. Just like, why is there, why is there water water coming coming from the the ceiling? ceiling? I don't know what that means. And worse is toilet water. Yeah. Ryan says, when I was eight, I flushed G.I. Joe's down the toilet pretending it was a massive storm. Is that like a zombie storm? No, like Duke. But he's just like, oh, he's like, he's caught in the tornado. It's a hurricane. It's pulling him down. The ship is going down. He used to say my dad and I had to pull the whole toilet off the floor and fish the guys out. Oh, you had to take the toilet off the floor? Yeah, you know, that... I can to see. me, that's not even something you do. Like, you, you wouldn't even think you can. Yeah. So, I, you know what, though? Like, I I get that. Because that's one of those things where, like, you're eight and your dad's like, well, obviously, telling you didn't do it. Yeah. So, we're going to let. you have to do this. You're going to fix it yourself. That's not as bad still if, as, as long as the water doesn't go through the ceiling. <laughs> you know, I think it could be worse. Krieg says that uh, he knows a girl who tried to flush her cat down the toilet. Oh no, probably really young. <laughs> well, like, were you mad? At, like, was she mad at the cat? Maybe like, the cat was in the toilet. Maybe so fell in or like, something. And No, that's a young Nikki right there. Like, I love my cat, but she's You're ruined. in there. You're gone. <laughs> the cat is ruined. The, the cat is in the toilet. Cat is ruined. So you got to flush it real quick. We'll just get <laughs> a new cat. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for participating. So just a heads up, everybody. Do not flush Orbeez in the toilet. Don't let them down your drains, too. Do not flush your cat in the toilet. Action figures. Do not flush action figures. Too much toilet paper. And remember, it's not a game to see how much toilet paper you can fit. We're in. supposed to use less now than more. Hey, you know what? You should be using your reusable toilet paper. We shouldn't shut the door on curiosity. That's how you learn. All right? <laughs> she was experimenting with the scientific method at a young age. You have no idea. Now, now you know that you're not supposed to do any of that. So we just need to establish a control group and get started. I love it. You go to the bathroom today. You're like, what did the riot say not to do? Oh my what gosh. was I not supposed to put in here? And how did this G.I. Joe get in my pocket? And remember, also, don't touch your face today. So it's the rules we have. Yeah. Got a message from Chad on that. He says, you guys suck for saying not to touch our face. I have itches and I can't stop thinking don't about it. Don't touch your it. face. Uncomfortable silences during that morning carpool. Not a problem. These two never shut up. It's the riot on Radio U. Uh, you know, today is, it, it's today, right? It's Super Tuesday? Yes, Isn't it that is. This Tuesday? Yeah. There's all those, uh, I can't remember how many it is, but there's primaries all over the place. Uh, and you should take a look. I don't know this, but in your area, you might find things like levies and local judges and all kinds of stuff that's on the ballot today. Sometimes it's super sneaky Tuesday where they try to sneak things in because not everybody goes and does things today. Yeah. (laughs) So you never know what your area might be trying to do. So 14 different states 
will have uh, elections Mm -hmm. today. So that's something for you to be aware of. And again, if it's in your home state, well, okay, there's primaries. So if you're not a Democrat, you can't vote in the primary. Guess who's a registered independent? Me. Mm -hmm. I get nothing. But I do know that there are quite a few local levies that are on the thing today. And uh, I don't know if they want... So still worth finding out. I don't know if they want an independent voter like me... (laughs) To show up and <laughs> vote on those levies or not? Well, they they either do or don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Depending know. Depending on what they're trying to push. The thing that kills me is like you know we've had it. Believe me, both parties do this. It's not just poking at one of them, but uh, every time they have the debates in which the members of the party they just eviscerate each other. They are mean. And then when they drop out, they're like, here's a picture of me being nice with this candidate. Don't you I think, must hate it? I think they're the best candidate for America. <laughs> I think it's time for us to put our support behind them. Well, that's what you were saying, how it seems like in this election so far with the Democratic side that they were super nasty Man, to they, each it other. Was, I feel like, like it was I, rough. It got to its own level where you normally don't see the grownups uh, be doing that. <laughs> maybe it's and maybe it was like that for the Trump stuff. I, I didn't no, pay super I, close attention i, don't I feel remember. like our our politics and stuff has gotten more immature and just more mean more internet-y yeah basically they yeah. say things that I, I don't think anybody else would have said even if it was a good like you know you have a good zinger but you're not really like doesn't do anything to be yeah. saying it uh but then they have to play well with each other but you know they hate each other totally super hate each other which is why it's super tuesday i <laughs> So a reminder, whether you are everybody hates each other, (laughs) whether you are a registered Democrat able to vote in a primary or not, Mm -hmm. there is a chance that there are things on your local ballot that you can still vote for. And I've said this before, but I've experienced it. I'm not saying the presidential race is not important. It is. But the local stuff a lot of times is even more important to you personally, because like it literally affects what happens out your front door. So it's worth taking a look at, even though I know no one's going to take this to heart. And if you do go and vote, you're just going to pick the names you like the most. But hey, don't know, ruin with tradition. All right. We, we tried. OK. <laughs> and in fairness, I've seen Nikki go through and pick her bracket based on team colors and do <laughs> unbelievably well. I picked good that year. I won. Even when. But it's not the same way with politicians. <laughs> Maybe it is. Hey, so what do you think of Obadiah? The truth is, he's not a very nice person. Okay, well, what about Nikki? The very best day is... You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Now, look, it doesn't happen every time, but I feel like it almost without fail, Nikki and I will hit something during the show and after the show. We're like, oh, how did we miss that? So yesterday we were talking about McDonald's from 6.30. No, it was Mm -hmm. 6 to 10.30? Or was it 6.30? Six, Whatever, it doesn't matter. It was six yesterday thir- morning. 6.30 to 10.30, they had a window where you could get a free Egg, egg McMuffin. McMuffin and for like Egg McMuffin Day. They wanted you to, in- you had to install the app, you had to go to a participating McDonald's, not really that hard to do, and you go and do that. And you then, had to have an account. Nikki and I find out after the show, complete. I don't know how we missed it. Like, you how know did we why? Miss this? Do you what? know why we missed it? Why? We already have had breakfast from Wendy's forever. May, so, well, may, but I mean, it was to us. It seems like it's been here forever. We suddenly find out that yesterday was the day that Wendy's rolled out nationwide. Yes, their breakfast, and so McDonald's literally was taking a swipe at Wendy's. <laughs> like, don't go to Wendy's. We would rather give you free breakfast and have you come over here mm. than go to Wendy's. But Wendy's was giving away, I think, free sandwiches too. Yeah, they were. And guess who got one? You got one yesterday? Yes, I did. After I found out that that was a thing. Now, just like McDonald's, you had to install the Wendy's app. But I got for myself a uh, honey butter chicken biscuit. Now, so their deal was they had like two or three sandwiches you could choose from. And you had to make an additional purchase. You did. So you could get a soda. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> That's all you got to do, guys. Get a drink. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, what was it? fifty, And I was sitting purdy. Well, that was a nice surprise for you, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was so good. I got another one. So, at least in our area, like I said, we've had Wendy's breakfast for a long time, but just not in every location. Right. Uh, and then they started to do their... This was how they were getting ready in our area. They opened at like 9.30 in the morning, and you could have... 
just Wendy's food. Yeah, not breakfast. Not breakfast, but just Wendy's. And they were just like practicing to make sure early morning. And then eventually yesterday was the start of breakfast at all locations at breakfast hours. Right. Oh, dude. Wendy's breakfast is so good. Like, it is so good. Their honey butter chicken biscuit is great. I know you're not doing dairy, but I wish you could try the frosty coffee thing. Uh, Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, the funny thing is, is that I I went on a little regimen thing where I can handle some dairy. Yeah. And so uh, I don't drink straight milk. Uh, but like, for example, last week I had pizza. Sure. And you I did had, better. Yeah, I did fine with it um, after I did some stuff. And so perhaps you just needed to reset your body well, for a little bit. My doctor and I had a long talk and he was like, bro, what you just need to do is go on these probiotics for a month and I'll bet you're fine. And he was right. Yeah. Uh, but the flip side is I still haven't had ice cream in like six months. Well, the frosty just, coffee just, thing might be a bit, I just, a bit rough I, on your stomach. When I see it, I'm just like, oh, I just, no. I like, at least with pizza, there's other things. This is just dairy. Like, yeah, I just don't know, think it's a good idea. You know, one day when you finally do it, then it'll just be like, oh, it's back to normal. Yeah, it could be. Um, oh, look, and everybody, look at the, the loving text messages coming in. <laughs> Randall says breakfast baconator. Bridges says Wendy's seasoned potato wedges, which are so good. Luke made his own breakfast. He was just sending us a picture of his. That also looks good. Little eggs, bacon, and toast. Man, no, like Luke's breakfast looks like something you go far away and pay a ton of money for somebody to serve it to well, you in an iron cast skillet iron like thing, that. Yeah. So it makes me think of like a Cracker Barrel or something. It's like a cast iron. Yeah, that looks pretty good, dude. Well, anytime you guys want to text us that, you're more than welcome to. We love to talk breakfast. Mmm. We do. So I just wanted you to know that yesterday, all that McDonald's talk, and I went to Wendy's. <laughs> Which is exactly why the two did that to yesterday. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe the riot would sound better if they spent less time improving their lives at their gym. That was sarcasm. It's the riot on Radio U. I got to tell you, I've in the last, I don't know, month, whatever, there's more than a few people that I follow on Twitter that have started talking about uh, their journey and their journey has led them to uh, not want to have anything to do with Jesus anymore, Christianity, whatever. They're post-Christian now um, and they have a lot of problems with this, that and the other. Uh, Maybe they're agnostic. Maybe there is. I am actually not here. Like i I'm not going to just give some snappy response, and I actually don't even want to argue. I just want you to know that in a world where there are a lot of people getting a lot of clicks and a lot of traffic out oh, of things like that, that mm-hmm. um, here's what I want you to know, um, that I had some very similar experiences to a lot of people that I have read, um, and in some cases, I suffered blows from the, these people that are now no longer Christian. It's like, hey, you were like big super Christian, made my life hell, and now you're out. Screw you, buddy. <laughs> I'm not going to say who I'm talking about. <laughs> but that being said. You might have experienced it. Yeah. Um, here's what I, I, I just want you to know that there are people having different experiences. And my experience has been is that I actually feel like I need Jesus more now than I did when I started. I actually need him more now for just day-to-day life and living. And admittedly, at times, there are like there are things I have questions about. There are things that I do not understand. There are a lot of different things that we could talk about. Uh, that being said, I continue to experience uh, something supernatural that takes place between me and God when he and I talk. I continue to see him provide help for me when I need it. I continue to see him uh, comfort me when I need it. Uh, I have seen him help others in their need. Uh, And again, the world is still not a great place. People still die. Things still happen. I don't get like I it is. I am not saying the world is not still the world. Like life is still life. I that's not actually what I'm talking about. I'm actually saying that in the middle of all of that, the relationship that I've had with God has been sustaining. It has been real and it has superseded even uh, a lot of the at times intellectual things that I may have to overcome. Now that to a lot of people be like, well, you're just dumbing it down. No, I'm just telling you that I'm a really smart person and I still in the middle of being smart and quite frankly, uh, enjoying reading smart things and listening to smart people. I still, my relationship with God is still something that gives me life and it's something that I need in my life right now. So I want you to know that while, yes, there are a lot of people that are like, 
hey, you know what, I've grown past this, I've whatever. I've actually grown into it. My need for it is more than ever. So if you are looking, I would really encourage you that God is real, that he does love you as you are, and that a relationship with him can change your life for the better. If you're interested in starting that right now, you can just say, Jesus, I want that in my life. I want you to come into my life. I want to know you personally. I want you to fill me with your spirit, and I want to know what you're about. And man, if you do that, you invite God in. You can talk to him about anything you want. Uh, he'll show you how to live. He'll help you through things. It's it's actually an awesome thing, for real. Is it healthy eating so many snacks, chips, and Oreos every single morning? No, of course not. But they do it for you. Uh, too many guys got their stomach for this line of work. That's real love. It's the riot on Radio U. So I was looking here. I know there's a word in the news about... Uh, like an Apple settlement regarding batteries. This is not that. Uh, But right now in the EU, they are looking at legislation that could affect us here in the United States when it comes to cell phones. And here's what they're talking about. They are trying to, like they're looking at laws that would not allow them to sell you a mobile phone Mm -hmm. that does not have a removable battery. Oh, interesting. So the the battery has to be removable. And How not, easy. And not through the tomfoolery <laughs> that you have to do. Because, <laughs> I mean, they're removable, but they might not be. Are you talking like for the everyday average person? I'm talking take pop the back, the back off, off and put a battery. new battery in. Oh, that's that. I think we take most of them out. And what's interesting is we all know that one of the reasons that batteries are not removable is so they'll just sell you a new phone. Mm-hmm. Like, don't don't worry about it. We'll just sell a new phone. And they're saying in the EU, no, that's just leading to tons of waste. Like, we are, we are basically making electronics that are disposable, and we shouldn't be doing that. Where your phone would be perfectly fine or work a lot better for you, and you'd probably keep it if you could just put a new battery in it in an easy way. Yeah. Well, you experienced that. Yeah, there's kits. Uh, what did you have? In, was it an iPhone 8? I think an 8, and I made it last a little bit longer. It actually improved it. I mean, I like to get new phones anyway. Well, so no, that, we're, not talking, that aside, we're not talking about that. But when your battery starts to go, um, yeah, you just get a kit, and it wasn't too hard. So Okay. So that's interesting. The uh, That has been... I've seen you do that and a couple of other people that own iPhones. Some Androids, not all, but some, one of their selling points Mm -hmm. is, hey, you know, you can swap the battery out. I did that. uh, I had a Samsung Galaxy S3 or 4, whatever it was. The back literally just popped off. Oh, it did? Yeah. Uh, No big deal because you could put, uh, you could swap SIM cards. uh, You could put storage Mm -hmm. in it and you could put a battery in it. One of the big hooks, of course, has been like, well... If we do this, then they're not water resistant anymore because you can't get can't uh, guarantee you can't get a, seal around a good it. seal if you are start popping this thing off and swapping stuff in and out. So it's not a done deal by any stretch of the imagination, but there's part of me that I'm like, yes, please, can we do that? And if you're unhappy with your phone for that battery reason, don't be afraid to try. And you don't have to go to like, it feels like a mall kiosk thing. Yeah. <laughs> but don't be afraid to try to buy a kit that makes it easy. Eric did that. Do you Was it iFixit? Yes, I think that was it. Okay. They, I think they're like YouTubers and then they made their own yep. set and like it worked wonderfully. Yeah, I've actually watched some of their videos. I was going to replace, a friend of mine has a Galaxy S8 she has a like a hairline fracture in her screen. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's that'll be easy to replace. Oh, no. <laughs> They're like difficulty, moderate yeah. time, three hours. Three hour, well, it's, it's, it's the reason. Moderate. It's funny. Like, it's the reason why every phone in existence, like you can replace the screen for 50 bucks, except this phone. Oh, and they're more. like, it's two hundred and fifty dollars. I was like, hey, you know what? What if we just got you a nice glass case, like glass screen? That lays over it. You won't even it'll notice. Feel, it'll feel new. <laughs> it's still be just great. <laughs> I don't know. She seemed pretty happy with it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if she wants a new phone, that's on her. And you got to decide. But I guess her battery still works. I didn't ask. The Riot. They're kind of a big deal. Uh, hey, can we do that again? Maybe a little more energy? Uh, no. Radio U. You know, something really terrible has happened. And I feel like we should talk about it because that's what we do is talk about terrible things. What happened? Well, there is an employee in Maryland at a fine, fine American institution, Nikki. 
fresh food made to order. Gasoline on tap. I'm talking about sheets. They're not just a gas station. They're a way of life to some of us, okay? Uh, it's a gas station. And so what has happened here is that a woman, I don't know if it was in Maryland or she was from Maryland, but I'll tell you what Cheryl did. She worked at a Sheets. Yeah. And she stole $17,000 worth of lottery tickets from Uh-oh. Sheets. Uh-oh. That's, that's a lot of scratchers. It is. How do you... Isn't it? How... Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's only a few. <laughs> that Okay. That only took three months. Did Over steal all that the many? course of three months, she stole uh, seventeen thousand dollars worth of lottery tickets. So, what does that mean? She's doing? She's ripping them off, or like scratching them at work, or uh, she? Okay, she would take extra packs of tickets to activate at the cash register, and would only put some of the tickets back in the machine. Mm, so she'd she pocket was, the rest, right? She was loading them, but she would keep some of them. Um, Okay, even more, whoa, even more interesting to me is this. She, get a load of this. She steals $17,000 worth of lottery tickets. She wins about $3,000. Ooh. Now, think about that. Showing you your odds. (laughs) 20%. Not very good. I mean, look, look at that. In $17,000 worth of tickets, there were only 3,000 winners. If I was the lottery commission, that's the thing that I would be the most concerned about. Like, please don't put that in the story. That number coming out. It's like, no, I make money on the lottery. Oh, no. And that might have been generous during this lottery stash. And Just, she did. I mean, she didn't pay any money for the tickets. Wow. She actually did make money. Yeah. Uh, but not anymore. She's going to be paying that back. And I'll they're, bet that $3,000 is gone. They're always going to find out. Everybody, oh, eventually, you thought, oh, three months, you thought you're still good. You're always going to be found out. So here's the question that you have to ask is, all right, since technically about $14,000 worth of those, those tickets were worthless, mm-hmm. really didn't have any value, does she have to pay back the 3000 she one? Ooh, that's or does a good she have question. to pay back the face value of the tickets? Does she have to pay back anything at all? Or? I, I don't know. Like, she hasn't gone to trial yet or anything. She's out I on think bail. So she pays back with the time in jail. <laughs> so I don't think they make her pay back money. Probably not. I don't know. But she, wow. They'll be doing wow. that from sheets, all right? Well, Nikki, I actually, since we were talking about crime and punishment here, I did figure out what I thought was the correct like thing that she should do. What was it? Um, she should be forced to move to uh, the state where you and I live mm-hmm. and open a sheets gas station on that corner right She's there. She's got to build it that's, with her hands. That's the only <laughs> way that we can make it right. They oh, have to put a sheets no. right down the street from us. No. So I can have two hot dogs for 99 cents and a it. large drink every morning. You like sheets more. I like Wawa's and I want someone to commit a great crime there and then put the Wawa's right over there. Listen, sheets is as close as we're getting to Wawa. What we need, Nikki, you, look, Wawa's it's a pro- way more this. regional. It's a progression. Yeah, you're right. We get a sheets here and then all of a sudden we go to Wawa corporate and we're like, they're embarrassing you guys. <laughs> They're just embarrassing you. You want to be over there. And so then we have them put a Wawa at the corner down there. Okay, we got space. So we just, it's all part of a journey towards getting those chocolate uh, yellow cake donuts back where I need them. The big ones. And the Wawa pretzel. And the Wawa pretzel. Come on. I ate two last time. (laughs) (laughs) That was bad. The right. Not, Not everyone's, everyone's a fan. I wonder whose idea this was. Radio U. You know, the United States going back into space in a big way. We got Space Force, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> May you make it into Space Force one day, what, Obi. What? Nikki, I'm the secret power behind Space Force right now. <laughs> You're a commander. I mean, yeah, there's all those people out front, but... I mean, I'm like the godfather. You, need you have to, be, to go in the back room to meet the, with me. You need to be the media representative. So, like, anytime they do interviews, things like that, they're like, what's the face of Space Force? I think you'd be good. Not, you don't want this no, face. No, you're need, just the everyday person. I want, Nikki, as the media <laughs> rep, I want somebody that's very good looking. You'll be fine. To be the... It's all about lighting. As yeah. long as they light you well, you'll be fine. Oh, there is something to that. <laughs> The right kind of light can make somebody that's ugly just can look. make all the difference. All right, tilt your head just so. Okay, we're going to move the camera up here. 
fantastic. And it works the other way. The lighting can make someone look really bad who normally looks really good. <laughs> Nikki, here's the good news. Is this my story or this yours? Is, this is your story. Uh, and that is that uh, your dreams can come true. Uh, I have been talking to Nikki a lot about moving into, uh, you know, they say the future of space is private industry. And so I've tried to convince Nikki to potentially look at joining, you know, Elon Musk or the Amazon guy or whatever. And she's like, no, no, no. But I think that's because in her heart, she's an American. And I want to. And she wants to represent (laughs) the United States of America in space, which is why I got great news because NASA. Why do you have all these sounds for everything? (laughs) Nikki, NASA is accepting applications now for the astronaut program again. No. They had it closed down for a while. Oh, yeah. No one. No. And they're bringing it back. Yes. Who wants to? We're not fit enough. I'm not fit enough. I'm not going to. Because you have to be. Okay. Don't you have to be like Air Force? as, sometimes, but look, as the media rep for Space Force, here's what I want you to They're know. They're going to make exceptions? No. <laughs> we're going to make, forget about exceptions, we're going to make a show. Oh, everybody can do it. You know how there's like the bachelorette and all yeah. that stuff? Nikki, you're going to be the astronautette, and we're going to put you on a, like, it's going to be so great because you're going to be the face of it, and everybody loves you anyway. It's a frowny so, face. No, but that's going to be part of the fun because they're going to see your journey as you grow from I don't uh, want to. being forced by the government into service to that's the force being, in space force. being excited <laughs> about the future of America in space and getting a chance to be a part of it. No, it's going I'm to not be going awesome. to space. I don't want to go to space. We're, we're going to start out with a boot camp light thing. That's going to be 8 to 12 weeks. And again, it'll just be a mod. You will suffer a but it'll just be a montage on camera. But then you're going to come out like tougher than ever. I don't want to. And I don't then, want to do boot camp. And then you're going to do that thing where you always see him like in the big water te- pool in your spacesuit. Oh, in the spacesuit. Like, okay, I'm working on the no, thing. No, because I watched uh, the Disney Plus show with, um, oh, the one guy. And he... <laughs> The one He's guy my who was favorite. In Jurassic, the one guy who was in Jurassic Jeff Park. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. He did a great show on, I think it was National Geographic, and it was on Disney+. Plus. And there was one with the astronaut thing, and they did the pool thing. They showed it all, and they're in there for like six or eight hours. Perfect. And they have to just go in the pool. <laughs> Like, you can't get you out. get into the pool? Yeah, no. They If you have to go to the bathroom, you're just in the pool. There's no leaving the pool. There's no leaving space or anything like that. I don't want to do that. Nikki, they have those special astronaut diapers. diapers. I'm remember, not remember the, the woman one lady? that drove for like 20 hours straight in her astronaut diaper? Because she was... She not, was on late, Nikki. She there. was on mission. She was on mission. I'm not going to space. Nikki, here's why you're going to be good in space because. From what I've been told, you can hold it longer than anyone on Earth. That's how That's how you qualify for the program. That's how you did it. Like, yes, uh, you know what, General? I was present when Nikki held it from central Ohio to the southern tip of Florida. The whole time. We, tra- I- we, stopped, we stopped at this one uh, Dairy Queen or gas station or whatever it was. And Nikki seemed desperate, and she walked in and immediately walked out, sir. It wasn't good enough. It was not good enough. I I just don't want to go to space. I don't like Space Force. I think you're a better fit for this. Why can't you do this? It's because I want to go that makes me a bad fit. That they won't choose you? That's right, Nikki. They're looking for a reluctant hero, not an idiot. (laughs) Because everybody likes a hero story, and they would like to follow my journey. It's going to be awesome. I'm not going to. You're going to be awesome. I will die before You're already, then. here's the thing, you're already awesome. Hey, you're already awesome. No. And we're going to show the world. No. <laughs> Let me tell your story, Nick. No. And you know what? I'm a nice person. I will not be nice on that show. I will not do that show. I'm not going to space and I'm not working in space. That's Nikki, even worse. Nikki, you you're understand, making me work look, in space. You understand that we, nope. ha- we have to break you no. before we can rebuild you. And you're going to build me in space. No. It's going to be awesome. The riot is to your ears what all those energy drinks are to your liver. For the love of God, please stop. I can only process so much. The riot. Radio U. Okay. Uh, Many of you may or may not know that I now have a gaming chair at my desk. 
Thank you, Nikki and Eric. You're welcome. Unsolicited, just purchased one for me. (laughs) Well, we go to this uh, auction place and they had, I think, like a huge, what they term like a a lot, L-O-T of all of them. Uh Uh, And I was like, oh my gosh, I know someone who wants a gaming chair. Dude, I love (laughs) that chair. Uh, I don't sit in it probably as often as I thought I would. And yet when I do, I sit down and it's like, Wow. If you have a good chair, it makes all the difference. So nice. Very, very comfortable chair. Furniture for gamers has become a thing. Mm -hmm. I was at a a furniture store two weeks ago, I think, and they had this, what they called like their ultimate gaming chair, because it's impossible for a video game player to want anything other than the extreme ultimate. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, Where was I? Uh, But the people over at Kotaku published something yesterday and like everybody on the internet seems to have picked it up. And that is this, Nikki. And I feel like this is this is what we're looking for. This is your story? What is it? Uh, This is the Bahat gaming bed. Ooh. uh, We're not even looking at chairs anymore. No, this is a bed that is designed specifically for you to (laughs) sleep. To game from. And then you can just play games right there in bed. Well, uh, I don't mean this in a mean way, but it looks like uh, a bit like a hospital bed. But for gamers. But for gamers, so it has a lot of shelves that kind of go around (laughs) it. That's right. Places that they've got snacks. I see things that roll. Places Places for your monitor. Places for remotes. Nikki, take a look at, I want you to scroll down to what I believe is the second picture. Yeah. Uh, There's nobody in the bed. Do you see what they have? That tell or that uh, moving arm that holds a tablet? It's got a phone on it. It's totally what I wanted. You can do that right there. I used to lay in bed. I still do, but I'm better say, at what it. Is this I, still past do. I still do. And like my TV's in front of me, but I'll lay in bed and watch my phone and I'll hold my phone above my head. And I've dropped it many times on my face. And I even have a little tiny scar on top of my nose still. from it. Um, but this would be like a little arm, you know, that. That holds it and puts it over on top of your face for you. So you could lay down and watch it. Lots and of it, cup lots of cup holders, guys. Big cup holders too. Look, just think Wally, okay? <laughs> just That's Wally but in bed form. Wally, but it's bed. Lots of monitor spaces. Um It's nice. Yeah, I guess. A traditional red and black, you assume it'd be that color scheme. Oh, I'll bet you could get other colors if you really want. Maybe. You think? You get a um, mattress, so you know, there's blankets, pillows that you can probably accessorize with. I think you have to buy those on your own. Uh, Bedside yeah. shelves, and you get like a bookcase. Or no, it's a soda case. Do you see on the right-hand side of the right of the monitors? That's for gaming, like... Uh, yeah, it's for energy drinks But it stuff. looks like a bookcase, but it's it does, not. No. It's just for soda cans. Certainly not for reading. Wow, that is that is it something. It actually, I will tell you, like looking at it, it actually doesn't look that comfortable. Uh, because it, the bed doesn't come up. You know, if it was like, you know, like CLE Craftmatic adjustable, like Oh, and moving thing. up? No, you're supposed to use this the big just, beanie thing. There's a big beanie thing that you're supposed to lean back on, and that's how you... And he's wearing a onesie in this picture. Like a very... Don't... What do you wear at home? Not a onesie. You I don't? mean, no, not I got a dinosaur onesie at home. You do? I have that oversized Sherpa hoodie thing, you know, Eric that became really popular yeah. for a while. Yeah. Well, you know what, Nikki, uh, to each their own. What you want to wear in bed is up to you. I'm not here to tell you about your sleepwear. This is just not my style for my place. Yeah. <laughs> So I feel like this would be a good fit for me, though. I think if you really liked gaming, you should put this in your gaming room. I don't think this needs to be your nighttime bed because when you sleep, you're not supposed to have all those distractions around you. Well, no, here's the nice thing about this. I don't know if anybody else does this. Maybe it's just me. But sometimes in the afternoon, I'll get some free time, sit down to play games. And then I'm like, you know what? I want to take a nap. Mm, good so one. I'll, yeah. I, uh, I sit on the floor. I don't know why I do when I play video games. I sit on the floor. And so uh, I'm sitting on the floor and then I just like climb up onto the couch, snooze a little bit. <laughs> Go and back then to gaming. Just roll go back, back onto the floor and start. <laughs> and so what this does is this goes ahead and I'm already in bed. Yeah. So I can go from snoozing to playing to snoozing to playing just back and forth. Saves a step, right? Fantastic. <laughs> uh, if anybody's interested, we'll send you a link, but I'm not sure if this will take off. This is like that one time my roommate, he legit has narcolepsy. I used to come in and find him. I say that one time, but I find him all the time asleep in front of the Nintendo. Just like like literally like late well, over the passed game's out playing? with the ha- his hands on the controller that's real he's on medicine now he's better <laughs>
You're listening to a morning show hosted by two people who absolutely despise getting up in the morning. Will you give me a break one time? The Riot Radio U. Nikki, you know what happened uh, yesterday? What was it? Uh, Tom Clancy's The Division 2 received its uh, downloadable content. Was it? Yes. Was that yesterday? It was. <laughs> I, I don't think it was supposed to happen until today, but they launched it early. And everyone was like, thanks for launching it early. It's broken now. Oh, that's too bad. Has a few issues. I guess. Uh, but I said, I was like, well, I'll just wait and get it later, whatever. I think I'm just going to get it. You need to give it some time, though, so that the first day, yeah, the first day bugs are always the worst. Well, you know what? I still have a little bit of, they did a bunch of free DLC over the course of the year, and I haven't played all of that. So I'm not buying anything until I play through those things, and then Then you'll do it. hop in and grab that. Of course, the other side is I could probably be the level cap raises if you buy the DLC. Listen how nerdy this is. What's that mean? Exactly. Listen to how nerdy it is. Well, it's just a different language. doesn't mean there's something wrong with it. So it's like this. When you play the Division 2, you can't level past 30. That's as high as you can go. But if you buy this DLC, you can go all the way to 40. Ah, what do you get when you level past 30? More power! More power. More division? That's it. I mean, it's <laughs> nothing. It, <laughs> well, they got to make something out running, of it. The running joke among people who play these games that are not exactly obsessed mm-hmm. uh, is that it's like the only thing that matters is the numbers go up. Is that number bigger? Okay, then it's better. The numbers go up. up. If you buy it. I just need the numbers to go up. That's all you need. Tell me how. how? Well, you got that $20 <laughs> earlier. Remember, you... Talked about that. I mean, you you were looking in a way to invest it properly. <laughs> I love, I love the idea that Nikki's like, why? I mean, remember if you that, need it, we can. Remember that twenty dollars you got? <laughs> you talk- I mean, we we'll say we're not going to say no to it if that's what you really need. I didn't know you could level up to forty. I mean, all the way to forty. Oh my goodness. Uh, How are you playing stuck at thirty? <laughs> I've been playing that way for a long time. You still get those uh, little, one of the caches that you get for leveling up, but you don't actually level up. You just get Obi little... does love his division too. I re- I've been thinking about it. Like that has been, I think I've played that game longer anything than anything else? anything else I've ever played. What on this earth is it about me in that game? I mean, I haven't played it the entire time, but I just keep going back to it just and playing game. it some more and playing it some more and playing it some more. I don't know. They sucked me in. Now I'm going to have to go back. <laughs> We Nikki, knew it all tru- along. Well, there's trouble in New York, and they need some division agents to help. They knew they need you at a level 40 right now. You got to get up here, son. <laughs> help us. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh, no. I missed it. Do it again. You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com.